In this video, we'll learn how to use the first derivative test to find maximum and minimum values of our function. Let's start by defining some vocabulary. So a function has a relative or local maximum at a point if the y value at that point is the biggest y value in the neighborhood of that point. So we're a little vague there by what we mean when we say near, but we're vague on purpose there. But if we look at this point here at, say, b, that y value is the biggest y value around. It's bigger than any other y values nearby. Now, it's not the biggest y value of the function because there are bigger y values over in this part of my graph. But this is why we call it a local maximum. It's not the absolute maximum value of my function, but it's the biggest y value in the neighborhood. Similarly, we can talk about a relative or local minimum of our function. So a function has an extreme value if it's in either a local maximum or a local minimum. But that can only happen if the derivative of my function is zero or if the derivative is undefined. And so we say that a value is a critical value of our function if one of those two things happens. A critical value is where the derivative is zero or where the derivative is undefined. And those give us the places where we might have extreme values. Sometimes we call these potential extreme values. Now let's just think for a second why this is. So why does my derivative have to be zero or undefined? Well, let's think about a minimum, for example. If my function is having a minimum, that means it was going down for a while, and then it started going back up. Well, one way that can happen is if the function levels out and has a slope of zero. So here I have a horizontal tangent line, which is the same as saying that my derivative is zero. Now, another way that my function could have a minimum is if it's going down for a while and then suddenly starts going back up without leveling out. At a point like that, my derivative would be undefined. And so those are the two ways that I could have a minimum value for my function. And the same is true for a maximum. We want to be careful, though. Just because my derivative is zero or undefined does not mean that I have a maximum or minimum value. So how can we tell whether or not a critical value is actually an extreme value? Well, we have something called the first derivative test. So it tells us that we want to make sure that the derivative of my function is actually changing sign at my critical value. So if you think about the example in the previous slide, what happened was my function was decreasing, it leveled out, so my derivative was zero, and then it kept decreasing. In a situation like this, I have a critical value because my derivative is zero, I have a horizontal tangent line, but I don't have a maximum or a minimum because the derivative of the function did not change sign. It, the derivative was negative before the critical value, and it was negative again after the critical value. So all the first derivative test says is that if the derivative changes sign, either from positive to negative or from negative to positive, then we have an extreme value. So let's just visualize these three cases. So if the derivative is negative to the left of my point, if my function is decreasing before the critical value, and then increasing after the critical value, then that means that I have a minimum. On the other hand, if my derivative is positive to the left of my critical value, in other words, if my function is increasing to the left, and then my function is decreasing to the right of the critical value, that means that I must have a maximum. And then finally, as we saw before, if the derivative does not change sign at the critical value, in this case, it's positive to the left and positive to the right, then we don't get an extreme value. So let's see the first derivative test in action with this example. We want to find the relative extrema, in other words, the relative extreme values of my function, and then use it to sketch a graph of the function. We'll start by taking the derivative and setting it equal to zero. In this case, my derivative, f prime, is 6x squared minus 6x minus 12, and setting it equal to zero is going to help me find my critical values. We should also make sure that we think about whether this derivative could ever be undefined, but there's nothing in this derivative that could give us something that's undefined. Remember, undefined derivatives would come from dividing by zero or taking the square root of a negative number or something like that. When we solve this equation, we get two solutions, x equals negative one and x equals two. So those are our critical values. Those are the places where my function might have a maximum or a minimum. But now we need to test those points using the first derivative test to find out whether we actually have maximum or minimum there. So one way we can do this is by drawing what's called a sine diagram. 
So here we've got a number line, and we've placed on our number line our two critical values, negative 1 and 2, and we know that at those points my derivative is 0. But what we really need to know for the first derivative test is whether the first derivative is changing sign at those points. So what we need to know is, is the derivative positive or negative to the left of negative 1? Is it positive or negative between negative 1 and 2? And is it positive or negative greater than 2? The derivative can only change sign at these points. Those are the only places where my derivative could possibly change sign. But what we don't know yet is whether it actually changes sign there. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose a value in each of these three intervals, plug that value into the derivative, and see whether we get a positive number or a negative number. So first I'm going to plug in a number that's less than negative 1. I've chosen negative 2, but really you can choose any number that's less than negative 1, plug it into my derivative, and in this case I got a positive number. So that means that no matter what number I would have chosen, I would have gotten a positive answer. Because again, the critical values are the only places where my derivative could possibly change sign. So if one of those numbers gives me a positive derivative, they all have to give me a positive derivative. So that means that to the left of negative 1, my derivative is positive, which means my function f is increasing. Now I'm going to plug in a number between negative 1 and 2. I've chosen to plug in 0 because 0 is usually something that's easy to plug into stuff. So if you ever get the opportunity to plug in 0 using the first derivative test, you usually want to take it. In this case, I get a negative 12, which means that no matter what number between minus 1 and 2 I chose, I would have gotten a negative derivative, and that means that on this interval, my function is decreasing. Now finally, I'm going to plug in a number bigger than 2. This time I've chosen 10, so I've got 6 times 10 squared minus 6 times 10 minus 12. Well, 10 squared is 100, so 6 times 100 is 600, and then I'm taking 600 and subtracting 60 and then subtracting 12. I could use my calculator or do some arithmetic and figure out what that is exactly, but I can definitely tell that 600 is way bigger than 60 or 12. So whatever I get there is going to be some positive number. And I don't really care what positive number it is, I just care that it is a positive number. So sometimes we can use a little bit of mental arithmetic to figure out whether the answer is positive or negative without getting the exact answer here. And that's all we need for the, po the first derivative test. So my derivative is positive on this interval which means my function is increasing again. So this is my sine diagram. Okay, I've recreated my sine diagram over here. Now we're ready to use it to graph this function. There are two interesting points on this function, which are the critical points. So those are the points when x is negative 1 and when x is 2. I know what the value of the derivative is at those points, namely 0, but what I don't know is the value of my actual function at those points. I would like to plot those two critical points on my function. So I need to take negative 1 and 2 and plug them into my original function, f. When we plug those values into our original function, we get f of negative 1 is 19, and f of 2 is negative 8. So if I were to plot those points on my graph, negative 1 comma 19 is maybe somewhere around here, and then 2 comma negative 8 is somewhere over here. So what do I know about my function? Well, I know my function is increasing to the left of negative 1. So it's increasing, 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 increasing until it gets to that point, negative 1 comma 19. And then it levels off because my derivative is 0. And then it turns around and starts decreasing, 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 before leveling off and getting to the point 2 comma negative 8. Then it levels off again and starts increasing, and it increases again forever. It never levels off again, it never decreases again, so that's what the graph of my function looks like. And we got all of that information, including the picture, simply from the derivative and the first derivative test.